Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day and joining us for our April webinar. My name is Corey Hesser, and I'm one of the program developers at Kirkwood Corporate Training. Today, are we, we are thrilled to be here with Malia Gudenkoff. Um, Malia first introduced Little Miss Finance as a blog to share her journey and teach whoever wanted to listen and to quickly or quickly grew as a social media platform and morphed into a coaching business, helping other young women learn and manage their finances to build wealth and a life that they enjoy. In 2022, Malia left corporate America to pursue Little Miss Finance full time and now focuses on spreading financial education through speaking engagements and working directly with employers to help educate individuals on their workplace financial benefits. Three fun facts about Malia. She is a dual citizen, Luxembourg and American. She has spent time living in Greece, China and Mexico City, and she enjoys spending free time playing basketball and volleyball at the YMCA. Understanding your total compensation is the topic of today's session, and if you're feeling confused about how to understand and use your 401k benefit at work, this webinar is for you. If you have any questions during the presentation, please put them in the chat. Malia is going to try her best to keep an eye out and answer any questions as they come in, and the chance that one of the questions are missed, rest assured, we will make sure to get that answered at the end of the session. So thank you again for being here, Malia. I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you. Perfect. Okay, get my screen shared here and then let me pull up the chat so I can monitor it. If you guys have got any questions real time as we're going, drop them in the chat and we'll I'll get to them um, to the best of my ability. So let me just make sure. Okay, I think I'm good to go. My screen is slightly to the left of my camera. So forgive me for looking away a little bit. So as Corey said, my name is Malia. She gave a little bit of background on who I am and what my business is here. I'm going through a little bit of a rebrand right now. So Little Miss Finance is being shortened up to LM Finance. But how I got where I am today, I graduated um, from the University of Northern Iowa in 2018. And that's really where my passion and my spark and my desire to learn more about personal finance started. There was a guy on campus doing free financial literacy classes. I went to them thinking, oh, I've never talked about this in any aspect of my life. I should take advantage of it. And for lack of a better word, my mind was blown. All the information I was learning that was so critical for life, um, but I wasn't talking about it anywhere. So graduated, went forth um, to work for Collins Aerospace, Raytheon Technologies, lots of different names there, uh, and ended up paying off 20K of my student loans within 10 months, putting into practice all of the, the lessons and the education I gained around personal finance. And at that time, I was still really passionate about talking about finance, talking about it in a different way, especially for young women. Um, so I started a blog and I named it Little Miss Finance. And it really took off as I realized a lot of people need help, but they desire more education in a way that is maybe a little bit more realistic, more relatable for them. Um, and so it evolved into a business. And as Corey said, in 2022, the end of last year, I went full time with it. And now I spend time um, working with individuals, but also with businesses, speaking engagements to talk about all things personal finance and financial literacy. So today we're focusing specifically on more of the um, employer front of things when it comes to personal finance benefits that we might receive at work. And the real concept of all of this is look wrapped into our total compensation. So a lot of times when we are thinking about a job, we're thinking about our hourly pay or our salary, but there are so many more other aspects um, that might come with a job as far as benefits that can be really impactful for us and um, really move the needle towards building well. So I want to highlight a few of those things, um, create really jargon-free conversation around that so you can better understand it and use those tools if they're available to you. So the two things we're really going to focus on are 401k, and then we're briefly going to touch HSA, which is a health savings account. And then like Corey said, we'll have some time at the end for questions, um, but feel free to drop those as we're going along as well. So I'm sure maybe you've heard the word, word total compensation before. It's kind of a jargon S term, but basically it's trying to highlight everything beyond, again, that hourly pay or that sal yearly salary that you receive. So these are things like company dollars that um, your employer might give into your 401k, contributions they might put into an HSA, 
um, money that they are paying towards your taxes or your health insurance deductible, bonuses, relocation, pay time off. All of that can really have a dollar amount put to it that can create your total compensation. So while your salary might be 50K a year, because of all these other benefits in your job, your total compensation might be near 80K. So it's a really important metric to understand because it allows us to better compare maybe different opportunities beyond just that um, base pay, as well as highlight these things that are available to us and make sure we're taking advantage of them if they're out there. So taking advantage of those benefits, especially when there's free money on the table that your employer is willing to give you, um, knowing that true value, the total um, outlook and view of your total compensation. And then, like I said, being able to use that as a metric when you might be comparing different job opportunities. So we're going to start a little bit with um, uncovering what a 401k is all about and how if you've got one, you can better understand it and make sure you're using it as a tool to build wealth. So the value of a 401k really comes with what we call company match dollars, company contribution. It's basically money that your employer is saying, hey, we're willing to help um, your retirement planning a little bit more and put money into an investment account for you. The catch is always that you have to be putting in that percentage in order to get that money from them. So if that's something you're not doing, that's where you're leaving money on the table. There's all sorts of tax shelter benefits that come with a 401k that allows more of our money to stay in the investment account and grow and compound over time. If you're looking for all this information that we're going to talk about today with 401k, it's probably going to be found in a very thick packet that is named something like plan benefit guide, plan details, employer to sponsor, retirement plan, some sort of guide that's going to have all sorts of fine print and jargon um, words about the different concepts that we're going to go over. So after we have a better understanding of today, I encourage you to go find that plan benefit guide and maybe search for a key, few keywords that we're talking about, poke back around your 401k um, and identify some of these things to make sure that you got things set in stone. So I'll back up for a minute too and say a 401k in general is was introduced late 70s, early 80s, I believe, as an opportunity to allow employers to move a little bit away from pensions as they were helping individuals prepare and plan for retirement, to have a little bit less stress, I guess, on them as the employer and place that on us as individuals. So it's really important that we understand this tool because we have so much more responsibility um, on ourselves to plan for our financial future than our employers used to offer back in the day, I will say. So a 401k plan has really been more introduced as we've seen um, the reduction of pensions across the board from different employers. So here's really my step-by-step -step guide to make sure that you're understanding what's going on in your 401k plan. I'll also say, if you've ever heard the word 457, um, 403B, those are other terms that basically highlight the same thing as a 401k. It's just offered maybe if you're working for a nonprofit or the government. So if those things resonate with you, that's what you've got. All sorts of similarities here, just a different name. Um, if I could pick myself a pension or a 401k, what would I pick and why? Um, I'll come back to that one at the end. Um, okay, so here's your step-by-step -step guide. One, determine if your 401k plan is offered by your employer or not. They very well might not offer one. They might offer one and you're not aware that that's an option at the time. So again, that's going to be found in that benefit onboarding information, that plan benefit guide. At the end of the day, if you're still not sure, reach out to someone in HR or the benefits team and simply ask them um, if they have a 401k plan and when you're eligible. So if they've got a plan, you might not be immediately eligible. There might be a certain threshold in which you have to meet for days of employment or months of employment and until you're allowed to enroll in the plan. So maybe you're eligible right away. Maybe you're eligible once you become a full-time employee. Maybe it's after one year of employment. All sorts of different thresholds. Make sure that you understand what your eligibility is. Sometimes you might even be eligible as an intern and you can get started in a plan at that point in time. So if you've got a plan and you're eligible, the first thing if you want to enroll in the plan is determining what percent of your, of your paycheck you're going to contribute. 
And the jargon-esque phrase for that is electing your contributions. That might be a button that you see if you're browsing around in your benefit portal. So this is deciding what automatic deduction from my paycheck do I want to take um, and put directly into the 401k plan. It's really A 401k is really nice and unique in the fact that it's done for you. It comes right out of your paycheck. The company goes and puts it in your plan. It never hits your bank account. You never see it. You're never tempted to spend it on anything else. It's prioritized immediately. A lot of times, if you don't elect anything, you don't decide, oh, I want to put 10%, 5%, whatever it is, your employer might default you into um, a default election. Maybe it's 2 3%. So if you're unsure if you're contributing right now to a 401k, I always advise people to go look at their paycheck or their pay stub. And under the deductions section of your pay stub, you might see your health insurance premiums, but you also might see 401k in that same section. So that's a way to immediately identify, is there money coming out of my paycheck, regardless of going into any sort of portal and trying to log into my plan? You can go right there and find out immediately if money's going into a 401k on your behalf right now or not. So determining what sort of, what percentage of your paycheck is going to go into the plan. There's a cap because of tax shelter benefits inside of a 401k account, which we're going to talk about. There is a cap on how much you can put in the account. And for 2023, that amount is 22,500. That amount may change in the coming years. If you're 50 years or older, there is a catch-up contribution to allow you as you're maybe more near retirement to put more money in the account, and that's in the amount of $7,500. So that is essentially the goal you might be working towards, that max amount to put into your 401k. Obviously, it's not feasible for everyone to start at that point, do what you can, and make that your ultimate goal to max out your account. The most advantageous aspect of a 401k is what we've alluded to, this company match or this free money that your employer is willing to put from their pockets into your plan. So <clears throat> like I um, was talking about earlier, this company match is the way for employers to offer assistance into your wealth building journey or retirement setup as we don't see pensions so much anymore. Um, the key with this is that match is saying they're only going to do that if you do it. So we're going to take a look at an example, but say there are, you make 100K and the um, employer matches 5%. That's $5,000 in a year your employer would put in, but you've got to put in that 5%. If you only put in 1%, they're going to put in 1%. So this is where a lot of people maybe fall a little short, don't realize this, don't realize what the max is and are leaving money on the table. So here's an example, actually, from one of my prior employers about what their company match table looks like. And again, this is information you're going to find in your benefits portal or in that plan benefit guide that's going to be laid out. Sometimes it's worded in a little bit of a weird way, um, which is why you can reach out to benefits or HR, have them explain a little bit more. But what this essentially is saying, it's kind of one of those wonky things, is up to 3%, the employer is going to put 3% in. So if you put in a dollar, they're going to put in a dollar up to 3% of your pay. Then it's saying as the employee contributes 4, 5, 6%, they're going to put in 33 cents to your dollar. At the end of the day, this is telling us that the employee has got to put in 6% of their paycheck and the um, employer will match 4% of their paycheck. So I would advise this person to, at the minimum, contribute 6% into the 401k so they can take the maximum amount of money and the full amount of money that their employer is willing to offer them. So how that actually plays out and how we can see the company match dollars being really imp impactful, um, we can look at in this example. So let's say we've got a 22-year-old. She starts a new job. She's making 50K. She wants to put 10% of her paycheck into her 401k. So after one year, this is the amount of money that was going to be put into her account. 10% as she was contributing of her salary is $5,000. And then given this example we just looked at, she is doing the max percentage. So she's going to get 4% from her employer. So that's another $2,000. So at the end of the day or at the end of the year, $7,000 is going to be going into her 401k account. 30% of that contribu total contribution was from her employer. So these dollars really do add up and they really can become very impactful towards your investing journey. 
So as you just, this, that was all really to say, what percentage are you going to put in the 401k plan? After that, you've got to decide, am I going to contribute that percentage or contribute those dollars as Roth or traditional? Historically, most 401ks have always only been traditional, but more and more we're seeing Roth options. So you might not have an option right now, but if you do, understand the difference between the two of them. And really, Roth and traditional, you've probably heard these words before if you've had been in any conversations around investing. <clears throat> Roth and traditional are really just adjectives to describe when you're going to pay taxes on the dollars you're putting into that 401k account. So on the Roth side of things, it's saying I'll pay taxes on my 10% contribution that um, in the past example, that $5,000, I'll pay taxes on that today. I'll put it in my 401k, I'll let it grow. And down the line, when I take it out, I pay no taxes. Traditional is just the opposite. I'm going to not pay taxes on that $5,000 today. So as I'm doing my taxes, that's $5,000 I get to reduce from my taxable income. I get to shelter it today and I'll pay those taxes I, as I withdraw it down the line. So after you determine your percentage, you're going to say, do I want to put that money in Roth or traditional? Oftentimes the employer match is always traditional dollars, but if you've got an option, you could decide how you want your dollars to be contributed. The, the term that I've said a couple times now, tax sheltered, is shown in the middle ground here. We pay taxes on the front or the back end, but the uniqueness of a 401k account is that everything that happens in between, as I invest my money, it grows, maybe I get paid dividends or I sell an asset to buy a different one, and I'm triggering all these events in which I'd earn money in my account because it's growing, all of that is sheltered, essentially an umbrella over all of those actions where the government does not get to reach in and say, hey, you earned a thousand dollars in interest this year. You pay taxes on it. It's all sheltered, which makes this incredibly powerful tool for a compound interest. Um, I see a question that says, what is a normal or average employer 401k match? I've seen it all across the board from 3% upwards of 10%. Um, so it really depends on what sort of benefits or how competitive um, your employer might be. I'll also say um, sometimes it's not always that dollar for dollar match. It's saying, hey, we'll put in 10%, but it's 50 cents on every dollar. So it can be worded kind of weirdly. Last, so we, how much money, what percentage of my paycheck am I going to put in? Am I going to put it in as Roth or traditional? And then finally, as I've got that money in the account, I've got to take the final step to determine which assets I want those contributions to buy. And that might be some sort of button that looks like change investments in, again, your 401k portal. So the, again, there's often a default investment if you don't choose anything. So if you're seeing this and you've got a 401k and you're like, oh gosh, I've never done this. Your money is invested in something. It was just a default option, but definitely still gain this education and go take a look to make sure it's the proper investment for you. A lot of... Um, options you're often going to see inside of 401k are going to have these years on them. This is called a target date fund. And it's basically using the target year in which you wish to retire to properly manage your asset allocation between stocks and bonds. So I'm not an investment advisor. Um, this is just my opinion. This is for educational purposes only. But 101, the difference between an individual stock and an index fund, a fund is typically what you're going to see as your options inside of 401k. You can see every single option here is a sort of fund. So I'm not necessarily being prompted to choose what individual stocks do I want to invest in my 401k, but what sort of buckets or basket of stocks do I want to invest in? So a fund, the word is really um, alluding to the fact that this is like a basket with several individual stocks inside of it. So if we flip back again and we see these different types of funds, small company stock fund, that's basket with a bunch of small companies inside of it. International equity fund, that's a basket with international stocks inside of it. So funds are just describing that it's going to be a basket of several individual stocks. A couple other miscellaneous things that are important to note when it comes to 401k. One is being a vesting period. And this is actually very crucial because it can get swept on the rug and not necessarily um, considered when people might be making a, 
a change in their career. So yes, we might get this 401k company match, but typically there's a little bit of a catch that the company is going to say, hey, you have to give us X amount of time in employment or enrollment in this plan before you can leave, go to another company, go to another job and take those match dollars with you. So be sure that you're aware of what your vesting period is, because if it's two years and you're coming up on you know, two months short of two years and you want to go to another job, it might be worth two more months to keep all of those company match dollars with you when you go. If you leave prior to that vesting period, you always take your own contributions with you in your 401k, but the company match dollars that have been put in as you've been enrolled will stay with the company. Um, if you leave your job with a 401k, make sure that you're understanding what's going to happen next. So oftentimes nothing might happen with your 401k, but there could be um, some sort of rule in place that if you don't have $5,000 in your account, it's dispersed to you, which is going to come with taxes and penalties because you're withdrawing at an age prior to um, the 59 and a half rule to 401ks. Um, they, your company might disperse your funds into a third party if you don't do anything with it. They might switch um, 401k plan enrollers and you might not be aware because you're not no longer employed with them. So my advice to you is when you leave a job, do what we call a rollover. And that's basically taking your money, putting into a, your new 401k account with your new job or putting it into an IRA, individual retirement account. So that's a whole conversation um, that we can dive a whole lot deeper into. But know as you're leaving a job to do this sort of maintenance to keep your finances clean and tidy. You've got to be, you've got to reach the age 59 and a half to take money out of a 401k in order to avoid a big 10% penalty and taxes on the account. So this account is for long-term wealth building, for retirement planning, for financial independence. It's not, it's not a short, a short-term get rich quick investment um, <clears throat> opportunity. Lastly, make sure to assign your beneficiaries on your account. This is saying if something happens to you, where does this money go? Who does it go to? Without that, things get lost in, I don't even know what, translation, core, all that sort of stuff. So make it very clear, make it very simple. Something happens to you, who does this money go to? Transitioning a little bit to HSA health savings account. Um, and we'll go through this a little bit more quickly because we're running... Um, a little bit short on time here. A health savings account is another investment account that you might be eligible for um, if you've got a high deductible health care plan. So again, like a 401k, it's got all sorts of tax features. The money that's come out of the account has to be used for health care expenses. And most advantageous that a lot of people don't fully understand, it's not a use it or lose it account. So this money rolls over every single year. To be eligible for an HSA, you've just got to have this high deductible health care plan. And here you can see what those deductibles are that make it HDHP. So if that's a plan that you're enrolled in, you might be eligible for an HSA. Um, regardless, if your employer offers an HSA, as long as you've got that high deductible healthcare plan, you can open an account on your own. Um, if an employer does offer it, again, they may offer incentives for receiving company contribution dollars into the HSA. So that was through one of my former employers. They, hey, if you take advantage of um, checking out these different resources, completing these activities, we'll put $100 in your HSA. So again, free money that the company was willing to put in my investment account on their behalf. <clears throat> when it comes to taxes, HSA is one of the most advantageous accounts because we don't pay taxes really at any point. The money we put in, the money as it grows, and the money when we take it all out is all tax-free. The one catch being that it's used for qualified healthcare expenses. And those are several, several different things, but here's a quick list with a couple starred. Most common things, vision exams, um, prescriptions, orthodontic, dental, physical therapy, all sorts of things that your HSA is eligible to be used for. So a little bit quicker on the HSA, I'm more than happy to answer more questions on that if you want to reach out um, after this. What happens to an HSA funds when you retire? Are those taxed? No, nope, nothing is, it has nothing to do with retirement. Um, as long as the money is used for those qualified healthcare expenses, whether you're employed or retired, there's no taxation on them. 
I will say as intermediate level HSA knowledge, once you hit 65, if you want to take that money out for non-qualified healthcare expenses, you do pay taxes and it becomes similar to that traditional um, taxation route that we talked with the 401k. So there's kind of some exit strategies to an HSA um, if you've got more money than you know what to do with or health expenses. When you leave the company, what happens to those funds but you're retiring soon? Um, check with your benefits team. I know my HSA through my prior, prior employer was with Fidelity, so nothing will happen there because they're a brokerage um, that I could have opened an HSA with on my own. Um, but perhaps like the 401k, you can roll that HSA dollars into your own HSA account, like with Fidelity or Vanguard or something like that. But odds are nothing might happen to it if it gets left where it is as well. So roll it over simple, similar to the 401k rollover. You just open an HSA at a new place. So, um, so for you, things I encourage you all to do is log in, look at your 401k in your your portal, your login, wherever that may be, check out how much am I putting in? What assets am I invested in? Am I contributing Roth or traditional? As well as, are you eligible for that HSA? And if so, does your employer offer one you can open? Go open one on your own, if not, and start contributing money there as well. With that, I say thank you. I also wanna share that if you um, desire more education or more resources, that's what I do. So I work one-on-one -on -one with individuals, um, whether it's through one-on-one um, -on -one sessions or a self-paced investing course I've got. I also do several speaking engagements. So I come into organizations, employers, and help their employees better understand those benefits at work. So if you'd like to see me at your employer, please reach out. I'd be happy to connect with you and get connected to um, someone in your organization to host there. This QR code um, or this link here, I can also drop it in the chat after, will take you to a page on my website that highlights a little bit more about all this information. Um, so that, Corey is popping back on. We'll take any other questions at this time. Here are my socials, my email, LinkedIn, wherever you're at. I'd love to connect with you and um, even just say hi, answer any other questions you have. I appreciate everyone's time here today. Great. All right. Thanks so much, Malia. We appreciate you taking time with us today. Um, as Malia stated, if there's any further questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. Um, meanwhile, I just wanted to say if you would like more information um, for anything that Malia presented on today, just reach out to Kirkwood Corporate Training and we'll be happy to work with you to get, get her into your organization. All right. I'm not seeing any more questions come through the chat. So Malia, it's been a pleasure I'm spending the time with you today. For all of you that are still here, I'm going to launch a, just a quick poll if you wouldn't mind sticking around and filling that out. Otherwise, I hope everybody enjoys their week. Thank you. Bye.